Good afternoon. My name is Edgar Peterson, and I'm the director of the African Center for Cities at the University of Cape Town. It's absolutely wonderful to be here. And I must say, if, if, um, if you're in the position that I am in, uh, my brain is completely fried uh, by everything we've heard since this morning. But I think that what has been interesting is that in almost all of the sessions, there's been this tension that has emerged between a, s a great sense of optimism about the possibilities, but at the same time, a, a sense of criticality about maybe we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves. Maybe there are some tougher questions that underlie some of the, the optimistic renderings. So we've got the responsibility in this session to do the reality check, to in a sense return to some of the fundamental questions in a world that is marked by deep inequalities, and most importantly, marked by growing inequalities, and not just across the North and the South, but particularly within the growing uh, global South as well. So, before we get into our keynote speaker, to maybe just remind us of, of, of a few um, of, 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 I suppose, the depth and the complexity of the, um, of the social progress challenge associated with the electric city. And if you'd forgive me, I want to draw specifically on the Sub-Saharan Africa example, because in some ways it represents um, the, 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 the nub of what we're grappling with here. You're looking at a region of the world that is urbanizing the fastest over the next 40 years. You're looking at a trebling of the urban population, and this is, of course, part of a much larger transition that Africa and Asia are sharing. Within that, already at the moment, 60 to 65 percent of urban dwellers live in informal conditions, um, and the depth and severity of that informality is profound. And it is not simply because there isn't access to that infrastructure, it is also because there are severe political and institutional failures that underpin the, the absence of significant progress and improvement of quality of life. In fact, data from the World Bank until the early 2000s suggested that Africa was the only region where there was an, uh, a statistical disconnect between the demographic transition and economic development. That has turned around a little bit in the last decade but still uh, nowhere near anything that we've seen in other regions of the world historically. So at the heart of this question of social progress and the distributional justice aspects of the electric city is the question of affordability. And linked to the question of affordability are the challenges of jobs. So a recent report by McKinsey tells us that in Sub-Saharan Africa, only 28% of the labor force is in a formal, stable job. I'll repeat that only 28% of the labor force is in a formal stable job. And so much of what we've been talking about today assumes an economy in the terms and in the ways that we know it, a formal economy where people have stable jobs, regular incomes, and households in a way can predict and anticipate longer term investments and potential social mobility. This is not the norm, this is not the case in the context we're talking about. So uh, I would want to suggest, and we've got a perfect panel to address, how do we square the circle between the promise of the electric city, the promise of paradigm shifts of leapfrogging technologies, and the deeply entrenched, if you will, path dependencies that we were reminded of this morning. And at the heart of this, I would suggest that we need to not simply address the question of affordability, but we need to understand how does affordability nest in three other criteria that ma matters in the daily lives of ordinary people in these cities. The first is quality, it's access to quality services, quality spaces, quality opportunities. The second is security, a theme that we haven't raised, but for the vast majority of urban dwellers in these cities, life is dominated by routine social violence and routine gendered social insecurity. And thirdly, the importance of systemic access to what the urban represents. So if we can embed the question of affordability within this broad idea of quality, security, and access, what is it that's required to make the electric city indeed a city of promise, not just for the enclaved elite that characterizes the current form of urbanism, but for the majority of urban dwellers in cities everywhere. And to kick us off in this discussion, we are we have a, 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 an, an eminent expert, and I will introduce him in relation to the rest of the panel and just explain a little bit about how we will manage the next hour and a half. We've got Wim Elfink, 
who is the Chief Globalization Officer and Executive Vice President for the Industry Solutions Group within Cisco, and he will set the scene with a keynote address. We will then have three further inputs, and they've all nominated to take center stage. Uh, um, Mark and Julio told me that they're not going to uh, come all the way to an Urban Age conference and not take center stage, uh, so we're going to give them the opportunity to take the podium. Um, after them, and uh, Julio Davila will speak specifically about the interesting emergent example in Medellin, Colombia, the Microcable example. We will also have Ken Banks, who's the founder of Kiwanja and co-chair of the Mobile Web for Social Development Group, who will speak about the potentialities of mobile phone leapfrog interventions. And then we will have Mark Swilling from the University of Stellenbosch, an academic director of the Sustainability Institute, talking to us about the green transition of ordinary cities as opposed to exceptional cities. We will, after those presentations, then take a breather. We will allow for some discussion and reflection um, amongst the group and from the floor. And then after I close that off, we will then ask a number of really interesting specialists with fascinating experience from different corners of the world to share some of their insights rooted in their experience and practices in relation to the keynote inputs. Firstly, we've got Wang Shi, who's the chairman of the largest, I suppose, construction business in the world, um, who, that leads the real estate uh, development uh, in China, uh, particularly social and public housing. We've got Nikki Gavron, who's the de was the deputy mayor for London between 2000 and 2008, and central to a number of the innovations that were experimented with, still in train, and also, I suppose, some of the things that didn't quite work, and we will get some perspective from her about what some of the issues are. Then we have Abba Joshigani, who is from the World Bank and currently the director of the Thematic Knowledge and Learning Group uh, within the World Bank Institute, but also a colleague that I know from the Urban Division who's done a lot of work in this field. And finally, Simon Giles, who's the lead for Intelligent City Strategy at Accenture, who will share with us again some interesting cases from uh, Mexico City. So we've got a wonderful panel. I think we've got some of the best minds to deal with this incredibly complex problem. And I'm going to ask Vim to take the floor and set the stage for us. Thank you.